Something popped up the other day, and for some reason, it's a bit of a head scratcher. Corsair is not talking about this case at all. This is the brand new Corsair 3000D. It got me thinking, why are they not talking about it? Because this is a case aimed at system integrators and it's a more budget focused case, but I'm not gonna do you guys dirty like that. We're gonna take a look at this new thing and I'm gonna let you guys know what I think of it. We're gonna do the thermals, we're gonna do all of that usual stuff. Let's dive in. It is a bit of a head scratcher as to why they're not talking about it. Let's start off with panel removal on the 3000D. There's two captive thumb screws on the side panel here. The glass is not tinted and essentially just loosen the captive thumb screws. The panel becomes very loose and easily pulls away from the case. The rear side panel is the same deal. Two captive thumb screws and the side panels are kind of loose on this case. And just pull that away. Front panel removal, very simple. Put your hand underneath this part here and only remove this if you're removing the front fans or installing an AIO, otherwise you don't need to do this. But just grab the bottom lip of the case, give it a yank and pull it off and that hurt my rib. There's a pre-installed magnetic dust filter that's on the top of the case as well, which is easily removable or easily installed. As far as PSU support, the 3000D supports power supplies up to 220 millimeters long. However, if you remove this hard disk case at the bottom of the case, you can increase the maximum length as well. But general rule of thumb, 220 if you're not removing that hard disk cage. You've got the two 3.5 inch bays down the bottom. You can also do 2.5 inch drives on the sleds down here as well. You can also see that it's got the standard Corsair mounting here and here for two more 2.5 inch drives. And there's two more on the inside of the case as well. However, this case doesn't include any of the sleds to mount drives back there. I think they've not included those to keep the cost down considerably. For cable management and cable routing, you've got a whole bunch of tie down points along the top edge of the motherboard tray. There's also tie down points along this edge here where the cutout for your 24 pin power cable will go through and any other cables that you've got going through here, as well as tie downs along the bottom edge of the motherboard tray and also tie downs along the bottom of the case. There's also one thing I noticed that was interesting for people who are RGB at it. If you look closely at both ends of the PSU shroud, there are cutouts which allow you to route cables through. So along this edge here, you can put an RGB strip in there and then you can route the cables through those holes and it just makes it a bit easier if you're going for a full aesthetic build. There's three pre-installed addressable RGB 120mm Corsair fans. These are PWM fans. They have a nifty little trick though. Well, the way you connect this to your motherboard and to your system is not with an RGB controller. They've got a three-way splitter which splits out the Corsair RGB connector. Then that plugs into a three-pin addressable RGB header on your motherboard so you don't even need to install Corsair IQ with these fans at all. Fan and radiator support's a little bit interesting in this case. At the top, you can do either two 120s or two 140 mil fans. You can also do a 240 mil liquid cooler up the top. And it looks as though you may be able to get away with a 280 mil cooler at the top as well, depending on your RAM clearance. But it appears that it might clear some heat sinks and even the IO cover. But that one I think will be down to the motherboard and RAM that you choose. Up the front, as you can see, those three 120mm fans are pre-installed in this version of the case. So you can do three 120mm fans, you can do a 360mm radiator. You can also do two 140mm fans, as well as a 280 at the front, as well as a 240 at the front. So there's quite a bit of radiator support if you wanted to do something up the front in the case. One thing I noticed was it appears that on the bottom of the case here, it has threaded fan holes and it looks like you can install two 120 mil fans on the bottom of the case as well. And lastly, a single 120 mil fan can be installed on the back of the case. For motherboard support, you can do ITX all the way up to ATX. But I think because this has a flat motherboard tray, 
Some EATX boards will fit in this case, don't quote me on that. If you really wanted to make those fit, you probably could without too much issue. I also wanted to mention that the maximum CPU cooler height is 170 millimeters, so most huge tower coolers should fit in this case. The case is quite wide, it's about 230 mil wide in total. For GPU support, you've got a maximum supported length of up to 360 millimeters, Lots of clearance in this case. And if you wanted to put a radiator at the front, you should be able to have that installed with little to no issue because the fans sit on the outside of the case and not inside of the case. And the radiator should just fit. It would take a little bit of maneuvering with a GPU like this because you'd probably have to put it in and then do that and push it into the slot. But yeah, it looks as though a big GPU like this RTX 4080 error from Gigabyte will fit. One thing I will mention though, is out of the box vertical GPU support, if you wanted to do this, is not technically supported because the 3000D has the horizontal support parts for the IO cutout on the back of the case. So if you wanted to take tin snips to this and then cut it, you could do a vertical GPU mount, otherwise, no vertical GPU. I don't know why they didn't just cut these out. They could have saved money on metal. Case wiring is pretty straightforward. You've got your USB 3.2 front panel connector, front panel audio, and all of the connectors for your lights and all your switches. As for top and front panel IO, we've got a power button, which is also a power light, two USB type A ports, these are USB 3.2, also a combined headphone and microphone jack, and a reset button. That's everything I think you need to know about the Corsair 3000D Airflow for now, but let's do our usual thing. Let's do a build, we'll test the thermals, and then I'll let you guys know what the deal is with the Corsair 3000D. Let's do a build thing.
Let's take a look at the thermals. What you're seeing now with the Corsair 3000D is the thermals are rather good. Remember, the 7800X3D does not get that hot. Neither does the GPU that we're using here, which is the 7800 XT reference from AMD. Overall, I'm pretty happy with the thermals here, and I think you'll find the thermals to be quite good too. As far as all the hardware, we put little cards through the video that say what all the hardware is through the build section of the video, but I'll put a PC part picker list down below in the description so you can peruse that list and see what everything is. Okay, the 3000D. Now, this case is a little bit of an interesting one. Corsair kind of quietly launched this case with no fanfare. They didn't even really announce this case at all. It kind of just popped up when I was searching new cases one day and I was like, hey, Corsair people, why didn't you tell me about this? And they told me that they're kind of aiming this case towards system integrators. However, you can go ahead and buy it. Now, as far as building in the case, it's easy. Standard Corsair fashion, it's just a very basic case. The version that we had in this video was the one with the three included IQ fans. As you saw, I pulled the fans out. We get comments sometimes of people saying, hey, why did you remove the stock fans and then thermal test with different fans? Well, I want the thing to look good and I wanted to replace all the fans. Let me do what I want. I just wanna have some fun building a PC. Okay, in terms of the build quality, the 3000D, feels a lot like the 4000D. So the quality is decent, but it's definitely not the best quality case from Corsair. The cable management in the case is fine as well. And if I'm being honest, it could have done with a few cable grommets just to hide things in the, that spot on the mid plate between the front of the case and where the end of the motherboard is, where you pass through that 24 pin power cable. But the cutout for that cable pass-through is the length of the case, which is nice, but it does make it a little bit more tricky to hide cables. To answer the question whether or not you can use the shift power supplies from Corsair, you can, and there's plenty of cable clearance for that as well. Now, this is where this will take a little bit of a turn, because as far as pricing is concerned, the 4000D, is, uh, how can I say this? I think the 4000D is a better case. The build quality of the 4000D is slightly better. This is not supposed to replace the 4000D as far as I'm aware. It's meant to complement it, but it's more expensive in a lot of cases, which just doesn't really make sense. Now, I feel like they've made this as a bit of a stepping stone into something else they've probably got in the works because it shares a similar chassis with the 4000D, if not the same one. So I feel like it's supposed to be a more budget 4000D, but it turns out that it's more expensive. When I first saw the 3000D, I was kind of excited for it because I'm like, hey, a new budget focused Corsair case. But the reality is I don't even think Corsair is confident with this product because they're not marketing it anywhere really. I haven't heard them talk about it at all. And if a company is not confident in a product and doesn't talk about it, it's telling you absolutely everything about the product. So I think the 4000D is probably a better buy. With saying all that, if you are interested in picking up the 3000D, they're going for around 85 US dollars or around 139 Aussie dollars with the configuration without the fans. If you want the version with the fans, you're gonna find yourself paying upwards of 100 US dollars or around 189 Aussie dollars at the time of filming this video. These cases are available now. I'm actually not sure when they launched. It wasn't very clear. I saw it listed on a couple of the Australian PC part websites saying coming soon and then there was just no launch date. And now when I check it today, you can go into a store and buy this case. The 3000D is a little bit disappointing, but I do see where they were trying to aim it. I just think it's too expensive for what it is. And if I'm being honest, a 3000D should have been an MATX case, not a full ATX case. I think a lot of case manufacturers have really dropped the ball with MATX. We've seen some really cool MATX boards come out as well. And some people just don't wanna have that extra space with the MATX board in a ATX case. Yep, that's it. 
If you like the music you heard here, I make all the music. It's available by clicking that join button right down there, down below. Make sure you get yourself subscribed, please, ladies and gents. It does help us share the video around, help us get back to where we used to be with our gear seeking glory because the algorithm fucking hates us. And I don't know why, but they fucking hate us. All right, ladies and gents, I'm your boy Nick with Gear Seekers. <laughs> you peak, we seek, and yeah, 3000D. A little bit disappointing, but I gotta say, with the black and silver parts in the white case, I think it looks really cool. What do you reckon, Claire? Do you like it? Yeah, it's cute. I dig it. It's cute. How is it cute? I don't know. It, it looks nice. I like it. I dig it. All right, I'm out. Uh, I guess I can do like a weird fade out thing. I'm just gonna fade out. Watch me fade out. Yeah, look, I'm not here anymore. I'm, f I'm fully faded out. Yeah.